in our today's lecture on the design of reinforced concrete training wall. If you have any questions, uh, please ask your questions in the previous lectures. Any question? Okay, if there are no questions, then we will go ahead. Uh, the topics which will be addressed in today's lecture are introduction to retaining walls, some terms related to retaining walls, types of retaining walls, soil parameters, earth pressure for normal conditions of loading, retaining wall failure, drainage, and other details, and design of a one design of one cantilever reinforced concrete retaining wall. <coughs> There are many uh, uh, terms that uh, you would have already studied and you will be familiar with those terms uh, because you, uh, I suppose, have already studied these things in some of your geotechnical courses. This uh, lecture is not uh, meant for uh, introducing all those terms to you. This lecture is only, uh, this lecture is, has been uh, devised in such a manner that you will be able to uh, design one reinforced concrete retaining walls, uh, but along with that, uh, you will also be able to classify some types of retaining walls and uh, the failure mechanism of retaining wall will also be discussed, okay? You know that retaining walls are used to hold back masses of earth or other loose material. And they are used in the construction of railways, highways, bridges, canals, basement walls, in buildings, walls of underground reservoirs and swimming pools. So they are one of the uh, important uh, components uh, in structural engineering. <clears throat> These are a few retaining walls. Uh, shown in pictures. On the top left, you can see retaining walls, uh, which is a retaining wall, basically a kind of composite retaining wall made with stones and vertical concrete elements. You can also see some holes. These holes are called as weep holes uh, in order to release poor water pressure from the backfill if there is any, because the rainwater will percolate on the backfill side and they may create uh, pore water pressure in order to release that pore water pressure, weep holes are provided in almost all retaining walls. This is another kind of retaining wall. You can see this reinforced concrete retaining wall. Uh, in the top uh, middle picture, you can see uh, retaining wall, stone masonry retaining wall, with some damage to the retaining wall also can be noticed. Then in the top uh, right, you can see a reinforcement for a retaining wall, reinforced concrete retaining wall. Uh, the bottom right picture is a retaining wall, reinforced concrete retaining wall with counterfoot retaining wall. And uh, this is basically an abutment of a bridge uh, because abutment of a bridge is also uh, more or less like retaining wall. Counterforts are provided. Counterforts are these elements which are provided in order to increase the load carrying capacity of the retaining wall, later load carrying capacity of the retaining wall, uh, and also to prevent uh, sliding and overturning of the retaining wall. <coughs> Some terms related to the retaining wall are explained in this slide. Uh, you will be able to see backfill. Backfill is uh, the material which is to be re retained or held back. And uh, surcharge is uh, any load on top of the backfill in terms of vehicle vehicular live load or uh, some other uh, load stored uh, over and above the backfill like for example a truck of sand unloaded on the backfill backfill will give us a surcharge load in a triangular pattern <clears throat> the the surcharge uh, it is very obvious that uh, any load uh, over and above the backfill which is called a surcharge will also increase the pressure on the retaining wall, okay? Uh, the typical reinforced concrete retaining wall has uh, these components, the vertical components, which is used to hold back uh, mass of the earth or other loose material, it's called as R mass stem. Uh, this can have a, a non-prismatic shape as shown in this figure with the smaller dimension, small thickness at the top uh, and uh, wide section at the bottom. Uh, but, uh, this can be a uniform section as well, <clears throat> depending on the situation. Because in most of the cases, 
in almost all the cases uh, there will be maximum bending moment at the base of the uh, arm or stem so in order to uh, increase the flexure stiffness of the arm or stem the width at the base of the arm is kept uh, the highest and with the and then it is gradually decreased as we move up to the uh, top part of the arm or stem <coughs> The back, uh, the, this heel and toe collectively is called is base of the base of the retaining wall. Uh, the back portion of the retaining wall base is called is heel heel part, and this is uh, the front wall is called as toe part. Sometimes a key is also provided, which is inserted inside the ground in order to increase the sliding uh, capacity. In order to increase the capacity of the retaining wall against sliding. <coughs> okay. The, you know that uh, soil will exert pressure in triangular pattern as shown in this figure. You, you know these things from your, your technical uh, understanding. And uh, the backfill will also exert a uh, vertical load due to gravity on the heel, and the heel will be pushed down. Uh, and in return, uh, the heel will be, uh, the, 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 this load of the backfill uh, acting downward will be resisted by the soil uh, beneath the heel, and this uh, will be pushed up. This will be the backfill. Will, the backfill will push the heel down. Similarly, the toe will also be pushed uh, up. The toe will be pushed up because when the when you can imagine that when the uh, retaining wall moves uh, forward, the heel will be pushed down and the toe will be pushed up. Okay, and the key will be pushed back. So if we want to draw a deformed shape of this, the deformed shape will be like this. The heel will be pushed down because of the backfill weight. The toe will be pushed up due to the pressure of the soil. The key will be pushed back because the whole retaining wall, if it tends to move forward, the key will be pushed back. And the retaining wall itself will, will, will bend up forward with tensile stresses and at the back side of the retaining wall on the backfill side. In the heel, the tensile stress will be produced in the upper side of the heel in the toe the retaining uh, in the toe the, the tensile stress will be produced on the lower part of the toe in the key the tensile stress will be, will be provided on the front side of the key not on the back side the front side of the key so if you want to uh, place reinforcing bars in the different uh, components of the retaining wall they must be placed in this uh, in these locations uh, in the arm part, this will be placed on the backfill part of backfill side, which is called the back side of the retaining wall, the heel, top side of the heel, the bottom side of the toe, and the front side of the key. So this is this will be the main reinforcement required uh, in a reinforced concrete retaining wall. Okay. In all other parts of the retaining wall, the reinforcement will be placed according to the ACI code criteria, which will be discussed in the next slides. Some types of retaining walls. These are typical types of retaining wall. A typical type of retaining wall is a gravity wall, which is used for small heights up to 10 feet or so. And these uh, retaining walls are called as gravity wall because they resist uh, all the actions uh, coming uh, from the uh, retained soil uh, due to the weight of the retaining wall. And these retaining walls are mostly uh, constructed uh, uh, with the constructed in stone masonry so the stone masonry uh, retaining walls are uh, uh, gravity gravity retaining walls and the these retaining walls resist all the actions uh, produced by the soil due to the lateral uh, movement of the soil uh, they uh, the, these retaining walls resist all these actions by the weight of the retaining wall only the weight of the retaining wall. So they don't have any bending stresses, bending uh, resistance. They uh, resist all the actions uh, merely uh, by the weight of the retaining wall. OK. <clears throat> uh, they, can, they are used in uh, small heights because for uh, very uh, tall retaining walls, they are not recommendable uh, for the reason that the size of the retaining wall will uh, become uh, too big. And in order to accommodate uh, big retaining walls in a limited space will be will become a challenge. Therefore, uh, reinforced concrete retaining walls are then used for uh, uh, 
in, in for, for tall retaining walls. In the case of a very tall retaining wall, reinforced concrete retaining wall with thin sizes as compared to gravity wall can be used as shown in this figure. Uh, with the arm much with much less dimension as compared to the gravity wall and heel and toe. However, uh, the cost of reinforced concrete retaining wall uh, may be much higher than uh, the gravity retaining wall. We have recently uh, concluded a project for the uh, CNW department where we have proposed uh, several types of retaining walls for different conditions, and they are uh, they are called as modular designs for different heights up to 10 feet or up to 15 feet we have proposed uh, stone masonry retaining walls then plum concrete retaining. plum concrete is a uh, type of concrete where big boulders uh, are placed uh, inside uh, a grout uh, type of uh, cement slurry cement slurry and grout uh, in in the the stone masonry the stone masonry the stone masonry with the grout and slurry is called as plum concrete <clears throat> so uh, the plum concrete retaining wall we, we have designed for them and the stone masonry retaining walls and the reinforced concrete retaining walls for different conditions okay with the slope side towards the backfill or away from the backfill there are different conditions and different advantages and advantages disadvantages of all uh, these walls so in order to, we uh, in, in, while taking into consideration all these advantages and disadvantages of different types of retaining walls, we have proposed several retaining walls to the CNW department so that they can use it uh, wherever wherever these retaining walls are required. And the, the economy has been also taken into consideration so that uh, the uh, retaining wall is not expensive, too expensive, uh, uh, where it is provided. Okay, then uh, the, there's, a, there's a third type of retaining wall, which is called as counterfoot retaining walls. This is a counterfoot retaining wall uh, shown in the figure. You will also see details of this. This is a counterfoot retaining walls. Okay, drainage is also drainage uh, is also very important uh, uh, thing to be considered in the design of retaining walls because uh, the most of the uh, retaining walls. Uh, fail due to the improper drainage on the back side of the retaining wall uh, or at the bottom of the backfill. You can see a tile drain has been provided in this gravity retaining wall along uh, the length of the retaining wall in order to release the poor water pressure in, in order to prevent the seepage of retain, the seepage of water beneath the base of the retaining wall. <laughs> Similarly, in, the, uh, in this retaining wall also, a tile drain has been provided on the back side of the arm in order to release, in order to prevent the seepage of water uh, to the base of the foundation and also to release the pore water pressure. Weep holes are also provided uh, in almost all retaining walls, as you can see some weep holes here in this uh, figure. And you also seen the weep holes in the uh, in one of the figures in the previous slides. <coughs> Okay, uh, some of the soil parameters, these are approximate soil parameters, which when required can be used, but uh, it is uh, advised to use uh, the lab test data uh, for the soil, uh, for these soil parameters. These soil parameters have been taken from uh, uh, geotechnical books uh, and it's uh, the, the soil, uh, the, the soil, the different types of soil have been classified according to the classification of uh, a typical geotechnical uh, classification. There are five types of soil discussed in this uh, table and uh, corresponding to every soil type, the unit weight of the soil, the uh, angle of internal friction, and F, F is the coefficient of friction between the uh, base of the retaining wall, which is mostly concrete, and the soil. Uh, and this factor is uh, important for the uh, sliding resistance to calculate uh, for the for, for the calculation of sliding resistance of the retaining wall. Okay, if soil is uh, sand or gravel without fine particle, uh, highly permeable soil, then the unit weight of the soil can be taken from 110 to 120 pound per cubic foot. The angle of internal uh, friction or phi can be taken from 33 to 40 degree. And the quotient of friction between the base of the retaining wall and the soil 
may be taken from 0.5 to 0.6. And similarly, for all other different types of soil, these parameters have been taken. You can you can uh, uh, study these parameters yourself in detail later. <coughs> Okay, this top uh, three types of soil, they are very good for as a backfill because they root sand and you know sand uh, will allow water to permeable, sands are permeable, they will allow, allow soil to percolate inside uh, the soil and they'll be, uh, the, the water will be then collected by the tire dead on the back side of the backfill and it can be disposed where required. Uh, unlike the clay type of soil which will retain a soil uh, in the pores of the uh, clay and uh, it will uh, create a pore water pressure on the retaining wall and this pore water pressure can sometimes, can sometimes may be very uh, dangerous for the retaining wall. Okay, different types of loading condition of the soil. Uh, in the figure A, uh, the soil is, the soil uh, is uh, acting uh, the backfill is acting on the um, retaining wall and you know that the pressure the pressure uh, diagram will be triangular in pattern okay this triangular distribution of the lateral pressure is shown in the figure the resultant of this uh, can be very easily calculated uh, from this uh, triangular distribution of the pressure diagram and uh, P, you know, will be equal to half of K H, where K is the active earth pressure, uh, and gamma is the density of soil, and H is the height of the backfill. And P will act at a distance of uh, H by 3 from the base of the retaining wall. Similarly, if uh, you, we have a uh, backfill, and on top of the backfill, there is a surcharge, which makes an angle of uh, lambda with the uh, top of the retaining wall then P can be calculated from this equation, Y can be calculated from this equation, and for lambda is equal to phi, K, active air pressure can be taken as cos of phi. You know these things, you would have studied these things in your technical book. If if you don't remember these uh, derivation and uh, these equations, you better uh, get hold of any good book on geotechnical engineering, soil mechanics book, and uh, you will be you will be able to see uh, not only these equations but also the derivation of these equations okay then there is a third condition where there is a backfill the backfill uh, variation is triangular but on top of the backfill there is uniformly distributed surcharge uh, with uh, surcharge s in pound per square foot then uh, this surcharge can be converted into equivalent height h prime uh, and this uh, can be calculated by this equation, S is equal to gamma S. S is the surcharge pressure in pound per square foot, and gamma is the density of the uh, soil. So this will give us H prime in uh, feet or in inches, whatever the units are. And then the triangular distribution uh, can be transformed. The, the trapezoidal distribution of the backfill can be transformed into a tri triangular distribution like this. Okay, then P can be calculated from this equation, Y can be calculated and so on. <laughs> because these things will be needed, in the, in the next slide, so it is better to revise these things, although you have studied these things in your, your technical course. Next, I will share with you a video which is a very useful video, and uh, you can also find other videos from this source which are very, very useful for our students. And I hope uh, many of your concepts will be uh, clarified with this video. You can further uh, Watch other videos from this source. Retaining walls serve the important role of holding back soil and rock, just as dams hold back water. The first video in this series showed that granular materials such as soil and rock generate horizontal pressures that increase linearly with depth. Retaining walls must resist these pressures, and many strategies exist for doing so. In this video, we focus on the popular L-shaped cantilever design. If you were going to use an L-shaped wall to hold back soil and rock, as represented by these marbles, would you point the bottom leg towards the marbles or away from them? Many people would say that the base of the L should face away from the marbles. They probably realize that it is hard to tip the wall over towards the left if the bottom leg points in that direction. In engineering, we call tipping like this overturning. If the bottom leg 
points the other way around, it is easy to make the wall overturn. So easy, in fact, that I can do it with just a puff of air. It looks like the case is closed. Or is it? Before we declare a final verdict, let's use the model to find out what happens when the bottom leg points to the left, away from the marbles. As we add marbles, we discover that the horizontal forces they produce create yet another mode of failure, namely sliding of the wall. And this occurs when the marbles reach a depth of three centimeters. In the model, we can increase the friction between the retaining wall and the base by placing a rubber mat between them. You will have to do some extra reading if you want to find out how they achieve this end in the real world. As you can see, increasing the friction allows our model wall to support a noticeably greater depth of marbles, but it still eventually fails by overturning, in this case, when the depth reaches eight centimeters. Now let's turn the wall around so its bottom leg points towards the right, the side where the marbles will be placed. We again use a rubber sheet to prevent sliding and we add some marbles. As before, the marbles generate a horizontal force that depends on the marble depth. You might be surprised that this wall can hold back 11 centimeters of marbles before it overturns. Can you explain why the wall can resist a greater height of marbles when the bottom leg points towards them? Is there an additional force that comes into play? Recall the granular materials generate both horizontal and vertical pressures. When the bottom leg is oriented away from the marbles, overturning is resisted only by the weight of the wall itself, and so it overturns easily. When the bottom leg points towards the marbles, the vertical pressure from the marbles helps to keep the wall upright. The downward pressure also increases the friction between the bottom of the wall and the ground thereby reducing the likelihood of sliding. When engineers design L-shaped retaining walls, they imagine them overturning about the point labeled Q. They first calculate how strongly the soil pressure will tend to make the wall rotate about Q. We call this tendency to tip an overturning moment, and we label it MO. Next, they figure out the stabilizing moment, MS, produced by the soil pushing downwards on the horizontal leg of the wall. Lastly, they make sure that the horizontal leg is long enough that the stabilizing moment is at least as large as the overturning moment. Then the retaining wall will be stable. You might be surprised to learn that L-shaped walls are seldom used as dams. The reason is that pressurized water at the bottom of the dam can seep under the base of the dam. And if it does, the resulting upward water pressure on the bottom of the dam can generate an additional moment and make the dam overturn. Lots of other clever approaches can be used to design retaining walls, but we do not have time to discuss them here. To learn more about how soil, water, and other materials interact with structures, we hope you will view our videos on dams, silos and tanks, and tunnels and culverts. Okay, so next we will discuss the retaining wall failure. Uh, a typical reinforced concrete retaining wall may fail in three different ways. And uh, this needs your attention now to understand the failure modes. Uh, in a reinforced concrete retaining wall, the first uh, failure mode is the individual structural parts of the wall uh, may fail and they may not be strong enough to resist acting forces. So this is called a structural failure structural because structural parts will fail due to insufficient reinforcement or insufficient size of the retaining wall any part of the retaining wall or all parts of the retaining wall uh, of, for example arm uh, heel and toe or key any of uh, any uh, one of these are more than one of these parts or all of these parts uh, may fail due to insufficient reinforcement or insufficient size. If this happens, this will be called a structural failure. The second kind of failure is called a stability failure. The stability failure can be of two types, overturning, as we have seen in the previous slides, and sliding. The third kind of failure, uh, which was not discussed in the previous uh, video, uh, may be due to the soil settlement. If the soil uh, underneath the uh, retaining wall uh, is not strong enough, to take uh, the load of the retaining wall, uh, 
in the case of uh, uh, horizontal pressure when horizontal pressure increases and the retaining wall there is, there is the retaining wall will tend to uh, apply pressure on the soil beneath the retaining wall on the toe side and, and uh, there can be uh, settlement of the soil due to the increased pressure from the toe this will be called as uh, failure of the soil or soil settlement so these three kind of uh, failure may, will happen in the case of retaining wall in all these three types of failure shall be avoided in the design of retaining wall <clears throat> the failure of individual parts of the retaining wall uh, can be avoided if uh, stem heel and toe are designed according to the ACI code as you can see on this slide that stem heel or toe of the retaining wall may fail in bending and shear such as when a vertical cantilever wall is cracked by that pressure acting on it the design of these components require the determination of the necessary dimensions and sizes thicknesses and reinforcement to resist the moments in shear the usual load factor and strength reduction factor of the ACI code may be applied the ACI load factors relating to the structural design of retaining walls are summarized below. This is from the ACI 5.3.1. A factor of 1.6 is used for horizontal pressure, 1.6. So as you can see from the table below, that the pressure of the soil, the load factor is 1.6, and it is denoted by H. So there is an additional term. Previously, you know 1.2D plus 1.6L. So additional terms of 1.6 times H will be used wherever there is a soil pressure on the retaining wall, uh, any any part of the retaining wall. Okay, the weight of the the weight of all the retaining wall uh, components will be multiplied by 1.2 because, as you know, that it is dead load of the dead load dead load is always multiplied by 1.2, and uh, the horizontal pressure from the uh, of, from the backfill is treated like a live load. Therefore, it is uh, multiplied by 1.6. Only one uh, thing sh shall be noted in this uh, slide, that is the weight of the toe slab. As you have seen in the one of the previous slides, the toe slab will be pushed upward by the soil pressure. And any weight of the toe slab itself or of any material on top of the toe slab will reduce this pressure. And we would like to uh, design toe slab on, on the conservative side so that uh, uh, it does not fail due to the pressure uh, from the soil. Therefore, in most of our calculations, we ignore weight of the toe slab and weight of the soil. However, if weight of the toe slab is to be considered in the design, it is multiplied by 0.9 instead of 1.2. Because uh, in this case, weight of the toe slab will reduce the uh, pressure of the soil and also the bending moment, the uh, ultimate bending moment on the toe. For this reason, it will not be amplified, whether it will be deamplified. Okay, these are different uh, uh, recommendations on the reinforcement by the ACI code. The longitudinal, the, the vertical reinforcement, the vertical reinforcement on the back side of the retaining wall is the main reinforcement in the arm or stem. Uh, uh, this reinforcement shall not be less than AS minimum, which we have used for beams. And similarly, the top side of the heel will also uh, have main reinforcement, the bottom side of the toe will have main reinforcement and all these reinforcement in the arm, main reinforcement in the arm on the back side, heel on the top, toe on the bottom shall not be less than this minimum reinforcement. And this minimum reinforcement equation is the same as the one we have used uh, in, the, in the case of beams. Okay, and maximum spacing for both horizontal vertical reinforcement shall not be uh, more than 3H or 18H. Okay, on the other uh, parts of the retaining wall in the arm the front side of the in the front side of the retaining wall the vertical reinforcement the vertical reinforcement on the front side shall be 0 0.0015 of gross area uh, and the horizontal reinforcement along the length of the retaining wall on the back side of the retaining wall shall be equal to 0 0.0025 ag according to the aci code okay and in all other places the reinforcement will be used as supporting bars at the rate of num number four at the rate of 18 centers will be uh, will be more than enough in order to hold this uh, reinforcement okay to safeguard the wall against bodily displacement that is to ensure its external stability 
The overall factors of safety is evaluated by comparing resisting forces to maximum load acting under service conditions. Okay, uh, as you have seen in the video, that the lateral pressure will uh, push the retaining wall forward, will cause sliding of the retaining wall, uh, as well as overturning of the retaining wall. You can see from this figure that the overturning moment is p times p times this distance, which is y. So p y is the uh, overturning moment, and summation of w, which is the weight of the components of the retaining wall as, as well as the weight of the backfill times this distance A, uh, this will uh, uh, be the stabilizing moment. This will cause the stabilizing moment. The stabilizing moment given by summation of W into A uh, shall be uh, 1.5 times more than the overturning moment. So the effect of safety 1.5 shall, shall be maintained in the overturning of the retaining wall. So in the form of uh, equation, this can be written like this, summation of W, which is the summation of all the weights times the A, which is the distance of this resultant RV. RV is the summation of W. So the resultant of all the weights, resultant of all the weights is being denoted by RV, which is RV means vertical resistance I mean, due to all weights. So this uh, times, multi this multiplied by A, because the overturning, as you've seen in the video, will occur uh, at this point, at the point, at the tip of the heel, at the tip of the, sorry, toe, tip of toe here in this location. Divided by Py, which is the overturning moment, must be greater than 1.5, whereas the distance of the resultant summation of W or equal to Rv from the toe. Similarly, uh, you can also see that this P will cause sliding, P will cause sliding, and the sliding will be resisted by the uh, resistance uh, force which will be produced by the summation of W equal to RV multiplied by the coefficient of friction between the soil and the base of the footing. So uh, summation of W or RV multiplied by mu or F, which is the uh, coefficient of friction between the soil and the base, divided by P, which is the sliding force, must be greater than 1.5, uh, so that 1.5 factor of safety is also maintained against sliding. This will ensure that the retaining wall uh, is stable and will not overturn our slide. Okay, the, the, the determination of small a, which is the distance of uh, RV or summation of W from the uh, tip of the toe uh, is demonstrated in this slide. Uh, you know that uh, RV, if, if RV is, let's say, acting, which is the resultant uh, of all these uh, weights acting downward, let's say this RV is acting at a distance of A from the, uh, uh, from the point O, then RV times A, RV times A, RV times A, it is a stabilizing moment, plus P times Y, plus P times Y, which is the overturning moment, must be equal to W1x1 plus W2x2 plus W this in all this. Where RV is the uh, summation of all these weights, therefore small a can be very easily calculated from this equation, which is Wx1, all these minus Py divided by RV, RV summation of W. So small a can be calculated from this equation. Once small a is calculated, we exactly know the location of the resultant RV from the point O. And this is important to be calculated uh, in order to calculate the stabilizing moment, which is summation of W times A. If the the, the third kind of uh, failure uh, of the retaining wall, as we have discussed in the previous slide, is the failure of soil beneath the wall. If the pressure of the wall on the soil beneath exceeds the maximum allowable limit, the soil beneath the wall may fail. Computed soil bearing pressures for service load conditions are compared with allowable values set suitably lower than ultimate bearing values. Okay. These uh, bearing pressure at the uh, beneath the toe will be maximum. And this is a condition where there is no backfill, so this is not a condition of basically of the retaining wall, but just for the purpose of discussion, this has been included. There is, if there is no backfill, the total weight RV will act uh, at such at such a location that the pressure distribution will be rectangular. And if there is a backfill pressure in the form of P, 
then this backfill pressure will change the, the upward pressure of the soil in this manner so that at the front side of the uh, retaining wall there will be more pressure and on the back side of the retaining wall and the hill side there will be less pressure so giving rise to a trapezoidal distribution of the pressure from the soil so uh, yeah. and there can be another condition and uh, in every condition the resultant r has been shown the resultant r in the second case uh, falls within the middle third if the base of the retaining wall is divided into three equal parts the middle part the middle third part is called middle third in the so if resultant falls within the middle third then the distribution will be like this and uh, whether the resultant falls within the middle third or outside of the middle third has a lot of implication on the stability of the retaining wall and uh, this will happen uh, the, the the resultant whether the resultant falls within the middle third or outside middle third this will depend on the relative values of the horizontal pressure in the weight of the retaining wall in the backfill if the weight of the backfill and the uh, horizontal pressure is such that the resultant uh, falls at the edge of the middle third then uh, this will be the condition a triangular uh, kind of distribution of the soil pressure will occur with zero pressure at the with zero pressure below the heel and the maximum pressure below the toe in this condition uh, r uh, falls outside the middle third and in this condition a part of the retaining wall is uh, is being lifted up because p pressure is much higher than the vertical stabilizing force uh, therefore, some part of the retaining wall is not in contact. This part of the retaining wall is in fact not in contact with the soil. Therefore, the distribution of the soil will be like this. In every case, the pressure beneath the toe, this, this ordinate shall be calculated and this will be compared with the level bearing capacity of the soil in order to see whether the soil will settle or not. Okay, if uh, the condition is such that R falls within the middle third, which is uh, case number two, Q1 and Q2 can be calculated uh, in, from these equations. In these equations are available in almost every geotechnical book. Okay, Q1 is the maximum pressure beneath the toe, and Q2 is the minimum pressure beneath the heel. Q1, Q2 can be calculated from this equation. Okay, if uh, R uh, resultant R falls at the edge of the middle third, then the Q1 and Q2 can be Q2 is zero, and Q1 can be calculated by this equation. If R falls outside the middle third, then Q1, Q2 is already 0 and Q1 is 2 RB divided by 3A. So for all these conditions, Q1 can be calculated, which is the maximum bearing pressure beneath the toe. And this maximum bearing pressure shall be compared with the allowable bearing capacity. If maximum bearing pressure below the toe is less than the allowable bearing capacity, then there will be uh, retaining wall will be saved. There will be no uh, problem of uh, the settlement of retaining wall. It is generally good practice to have the resultant located within the middle third. If A is mostly the case, the resultant strike within the middle third, advocate safety against overturning exists and no special check will be made. At this point shall be noted if resultant is within the middle third, then the overturning will not occur. Sliding may occur, but the overturning may uh, the overturning will not occur. This is for sure. If the resultant is located outside the middle third, effect of safety of at least 1.5 should be maintained against overturning. So this point shall be noted. The most common failure uh, reasons of the retaining wall have been discussed on this slide. The failures are damaged retaining walls in most cases occur due to one of the two following reasons. Number one is overloading of the soil under the wall with consequent forward tipping, which is the soil failure. So the soil bearing capacity failure or the soil settlement is one of the most common reasons. And that is what we have all, also observed in the a project of uh, uh, modular design of retaining wall for CNW. <coughs> that in most of the cases, the settlement of the soil was the major problem, in, uh, especially in the case of brevity retaining wall, where the wall, the, the wall weight is much higher uh, as compared to a cantilever reinforced concrete retaining wall. And, uh, the other reason is insufficient drainage of the backfill. Allowable for so, in order to uh, take care of uh, these two problems, allowable bearing pressure should be selected with great care. 
and the soil immediately underlying the footing in the deeper layer should necessarily be investigated uh, in order to uh, prevent uh, the failure of retaining wall due to these reasons. The drainage uh, is discussed in the previous slides, can be uh, provided in several ways in the form of weep holes, in the form of a tile drain at the back side of the retaining wall in this form. Okay. So, next is a, an example of a reinforced concrete retaining wall. The height, the total height of the retaining wall is 15 feet, but the soil to be retained is 11 feet and 6 inch. And the other parameters are also given in this uh, slide. The unit rate of the soil 120 pound per cubic foot, angle of internal friction 30 degree, and uh, base friction coefficient F is equal to 0 0.6, active pressure is 0 0.33, and passive pressure is 3. There is a surcharge of 400 pound per square foot, and uh, the density of concrete which is to be used in the design of retaining wall is 150 pound per cubic foot with a compressive strength of 4500 psi and yield strength of 60,000 psi. The allowable bearing pressure is 8,000 psf or 8 ksf. This is the data given. We are required to design this retaining wall. We will be designing this retaining wall against all the failure modes. Okay, first of all, uh, to uh, fix the size of the retaining wall, we will use thumb rule. This thumb rule is, uh, in most of the cases, this works very well. So the top of the retaining wall can be is can be taken from 8 to 12 inch. The bottom of the uh, arm or stem, the width at the bottom of the arm can be taken is h by 15 to h by 10. For example, if the 10 feet is the height of the retaining wall, so and if you want to uh, take h by 15, this will be 1.5 feet. If you want to use h by 10, this will be 1 feet. Any value from h by 15 to h by 10 can be used for uh, the sizes at the uh, base of the stem. Okay, the total the total uh, length of the, the total length of the base of the retaining wall can be taken uh, can be assumed from 0.4 h to 0.65. For example, if h is 10 feet, this can be 0.4. Uh, this can be 4 feet and R 6.5 feet. So any value between 4 to 6.5 feet can be assumed for the width of the for the length of the base of the retaining wall. Sorry. The thickness of the base can be taken from this equation, h by 15 to h by 10, okay? And uh, the size of the toe can be fixed from b by 3. The one-third of the length of the base, which is one-third of the length of the base, the size of the toe. So this will give us a good uh, head start, and then we can check the retaining wall, and if there is any problem, we can change the size of the retaining wall. Okay, so let's assume that uh, we take the length of the base of the retaining wall equal to 0.65 h, which is 0.65 into 15, 9.75 feet. So base of the retaining wall is 9.75 feet. And uh, the thickness of the retaining wall, the thickness of the retaining wall, the thickness of the base of the retaining wall, base of the retaining wall is taken as h by 10, h by 10 is 1.5 feet. Top width of the arm is taken as 8 inch, and the width of the arm at the bottom here at this location is taken as h by 12. Any value between those recommended can be taken or any other value can also be assumed depending on the situation. But finally, we'll, we will have to check whether the size of the retaining wall is sufficient or not. If it is insufficient, we'll change the size according to the requirement. The length of toe of retaining wall is b by 3 and 9.75 divided by 3 is 3.25. The equivalent depth of surcharge, surcharge is 400 pound per square foot or 0.4 kip per square foot. It will be divided by the density of the soil of the surcharge, which is 0.12. And equivalent uh, height, h prime, 3.33 feet can be used in order to simulate the surcharge by the triangular distribution of the backfill. Like this. The triangular distribution, the surcharge has been transformed into this triangular distribution. And this triangular distribution, from this triangular distribution, P can be calculated from this equation, Y can be calculated from this equation. The P value when calculated from this equation, because everything is known to us in this equation, active pressure, gamma, H, H prime, P comes out to be 6.49 K, which is the resultant of this triangular distribution of the soil, both by the backfill and surcharge. 
y is the uh, point of uh, application of this force p from the bottom of the retaining wall this is calculated from this equation and it comes out to be 5.77 feet and the overturning moment can then be calculated overturning moment is pa times y so this is 37.45 foot kip now when overturning moment has been calculated we can then determine the stabilizing moment provided we calculate uh, the point of application of the resultant rv which is a summation of all the weights acting downward so from all the weights which are acting downward w1 which is uh, the weight of the arm is being divided into two parts one rectangle and the other triangular part w1 is rectangle w2 is triangular part w6 is the weight of the back fill uh, rectangular uh, form and w5 is a triangular form w3 is the weight of the base and all these weights multiply by the uh, uh, the weights have been calculated from the area, from the area in the relevant density uh, of the material. The weights have been calculated and the weights are acting downward. And all the weights, the point of application of the weight uh, is known to us. And the distance from the point O, point O, which is the tip of the uh, toe, uh, is also can also be calculated with a little effort. So when these uh, weights multiply by the distances are calculated, summation of Wx, then summation of Wx comes out to be 96.84 kip. Just for the sake of uh, demonstration, I will uh, discuss the weight W1, which is uh, the weight of the rectangular part of the arm. W1, you know that it is 8 inch at the top. Uh, OK, so when we draw a line this uh, form, this triangle will have this side 8 inch. And the height of this, uh, the height of this uh, rectangle, sorry, this the height of this rectangle will be equal to uh, 13.5 feet. 13.5 feet from the uh, from from the top of the uh, base of the retaining wall from this location. Uh, so, and the uh, and the width of the this rectangle is eight inch. So eight inch multi divided by twelve. This will convert into feet. Multiply by 13.5. This will be the this will come out to be the area of this rectangle, and uh, W is equal to gamma a. Gamma is 0 0.15. 0 0.15 multiply by 9 will give us 1.35 weight of this rectangular part of the arm, and the distance of this can be calculated because W1 will act at the center of this rectangle, and the distance from the uh, toe to this center can be very easily calculated, which is 3.5 feet. So 1.35 to 3.5 feet, this will give us Wx. For all other weights, this can be done very easily. And the summation of all weights will give us Rv. And summation of all weights is equal to Rv is equal to 16 k. The over the stabilizing moment is 96.84 k. OK, so first of all, we will determine factor of safety against overturning, which is summation of Wx divided by the overturning moment which is 96.84 divided by 37.45. This is 2.5 greater than 1.5. Factor of safety against sliding is F multiplied by RV divided by PA. Total horizontal sliding force is 6.49 kip, which we have calculated in the previous slide. And distance of sliding is 0 0.6 into 16, 9.6 kips. Factor of safety against sliding is calculated from this uh, ratio of uh, Sliding force to the uh, horizontal force, uh, which is coming from the backfill. So this comes out to be 1.47. This is slightly less than 1.5. So I, this will work. However, if you want to increase this ratio, we can provide uh, sliding, or we can also increase the size of the heel, which will increase the size, the weight of the soil, and by increasing the weight of the soil, the Rv will increase, and when Rv increases, then this uh, ratio will also increase. Or we can also provide a key. Okay. Uh, next, we will uh, calculate uh, a small a, which is the location of. Uh, the resultant R from point B, which is the uh, tip of the toe, 
And we have demonstrated this in the previous slide. This can be done by this equation. A is equal to summation of Wx minus over turning moment divided by R. We, this comes out to be 3.71 feet. So uh, from this, we uh, the, when small a is 3.71 feet, and this uh, one third of the uh, base of the retaining wall, one third of the base of the retaining wall is 3.25 feet, it means that R falls within the middle third because 3.71 is small a, and if small a is more than this distance L by 3, it means that R falls within the middle third. And we have uh, discussed in the previous slide that it is a favorable condition when R falls within the middle third because then you don't have to check the uh, overturning, uh, you don't have to check the uh, retaining wall against overturning because uh, when R falls within the middle third, it is for sure that. A retaining wall will be safe against overturning. Although we have done this in the previous slide just for the purpose of demonstration. Now we can also determine Q1 and Q2 in order to uh, check the uh, retaining wall against any uh, soil settlement. Q1 is the bearing pressure below uh, the toe and Q2 is the bearing pressure below the heel. Q1 can be calculated from this equation. Everything in this equation is known to us. When Q1 is calculated from this equation, Q1 comes out to be 2.8 k per square foot. So this uh, ordinate comes out to be 2.8 k per square foot in the ordinate below the heel comes out to be compared with the bearing pressure, allowable bearing, allowable bearing capacity of the soil. If allowable bearing capacity is more than Q1, then uh, the soil will not settle and the retaining wall is safe uh, against the soil settlement. So, and if, if it does not happen, then we will increase the base of the retaining wall in order to decrease Q1. Okay, in our case, this is safe. So, finally, we have selected these dimensions with these dimensions and the um, checks against the stability. All the checks uh, against stability have been uh, made and uh, we have found that the, the retaining wall is safe against overturning, against sliding and also against soil settlement. So the final part of this uh, design uh, of the retaining wall will be uh, checking uh, the arm, heel and toe separately uh, against the structural failure. So now we will design the arm, heel and toe uh, for st uh, structural adequacy. Uh, for structural adequacy, it is important to uh, calculate loads on different parts of the retaining wall. First of all, we will calculate load on the uh, heel uh, and the toe of the retaining wall. We will ignore the weight of the toe because uh, the toe will, any weight of the toe or uh, uh, weight of the soil on the toe will act downward. And when this act downward and the soil should act upwards, and the soil pressure upward will uh, give us the bending moment at the toe and the junction of the arm. Uh, so uh, if arm, if the weight of toe and weight of the soil above the toe is ignored, so this will be conservative. It will give more reinforcement, which is good for the purpose of design of toe. Okay, so this uh, weight of the toe and weight of the soil on toe is ignored. Factored soil pressure at the exterior end of the slab. This is to be noted. 2.8 k per square foot was the ordinate here at the tip of the toe. Uh, okay, and uh, this will be multiplied by 1.6 in order to determine the um, ultimate pressure of the soil. The total pressure, as you have seen in the previous slide, was equal to this thing 0 0.46 on the heel side and 2.8 on the toe side, and there was a And you know that the size of toe is 3.25 feet. So this pressure, this part of the pressure, this part of the pressure, you can see the mouse. This pressure is basically acting upward on the toe and this will cause bending movement in the toe and the reinforcement will be provided on the bottom of the toe uh, from this bending movement. You know this ordinate is uh, 0 0.46. This is 0 0.46, this one. The total, this, this ordinate is 2.03. This can be calculated uh, from, uh, it's very simple, this ordinate at the 
interface at the interface of the arm and the heel this location uh, arm and the store sorry this location this 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 location this can be very easily calculated this ordinate is 2.03 because this ordinate is 0.46 and this is 2.8 this distance is known to us so this ordinate can be calculated 2.03 is this ordinate and 2.8 is this ordinate so this is a trapezoidal kind of pressure from the soil acting in upward direction you would have calculated shear force and bending moment diagram for a trapezoidal load. You can do so in this case, or otherwise you divide this into a rectangular pressure and a, and a trapezoidal pressure or uh, rectangular uh, triangular pressure. If you draw a line in from this part, from this point, then this will give us a triangular and uh, rectangular distribution like this. Uh, this is uh, the total 2.03 if we draw a line from this location to this like this so this ordinate is 2.03 and the remaining 2.8 minus 2.03 will be 0 0.77 okay this total ordinate now you look at the figure in the uh, right bottom uh, this is the toe this is the junction of toe with the arm. Okay. This is this ordinate was 2.8, 2.8 multiply by sorry, 2.8 multiply 1.6. This is 4.48. Now this is 4.48. Total 4.48. This ordinate 2.03. 2.03 multiply by 1.6. This is 3.24. So this ordinate is 3.24. Well, now we will draw a line like this. So one rectangle will be uh, 2.0. Three point two four, three point two four, uh, multiply by this distance three point two five will give us the weight acting in upward direction, and then the remaining part, uh, four point four eight minus uh, three point two four will be this ordinate of the triangle one point two four, one point two four multiplied by three point two five divided by two will give us another weight. So if you want to uh, calculate uh, shear force in bending moment now from this diagram of the trapezoidal distribution of the soil pressure acting in the upward direction on the so we can calculate this easily. Okay, loads on the heel. Loads on the heel are uniformly distributed, acting downward. This is weight of the back fill, weight of the back fill, and weight of the uh, heel itself. Both shall be uh, taken into a, account in the calculation of bending moments at the edge of the heel with the at the junction of the heel with the arm. The self fit of the heel can be calculated from this equation 1.2 into gamma of concrete H times B. B is taken as one foot. And B is this 1.5 feet, which is the depth thickness of the heel. Okay, and factor of art fill load. Uh, H fill, you know, it's 13.5 feet is the back fill on the uh, heel. Uh, this is the height of the back fill. And one foot is the uh, into the uh, along the length of the retaining wall, this one foot is taken, and 1.6 multiplied by 0 0.12, 0 0.12, the density of the soil multiplied by 13.5 into 1 is 2.592 k per foot on the heel. Uh, this is the backfill weight. Factor of surcharge load is also taken into concentration by taking into concentration the effective height of the surcharge. Total factor load comes out to be 3.5 k per foot, and this is uniformly distributed. So for this uniformly distributed cantilever kind of beam, you can very easily calculate shear force and bending moment diagram, and for that, this hill will be designed. Now, on the uh, loads on the arm uh, can be calculated very easily. You know that PA is the resultant force. We can write down, if, if you want to write down PA in terms of H of the, uh, which is the height of the backfill, we can do so very easily uh, in this form. And for, then for every value of, uh, H for every value for any value of H, we can very easily calculate PA. So, uh, and Y is also Y can also be written in terms of H. Then the ultimate bending moment can be written in the form of uh, H. And for every value of H, bending moment diagram can be calculated. This can be drawn very easily, like this bending moment diagram. And this is a shear force diagram, shear force and bending moment diagram can be drawn. Or distribution distribution very easy
is the shear force bending moment diagram. Okay, the, for the analysis of tau uh, is uh, uh, I uh, said earlier that uh, this is the trapezoidal distribution of the soil pressure in the upward direction. You can determine the load either by trapezoidal uh, area, which is 4.48 plus 3.24 multiplied by 3.25 divided by 2. This will give you 8.3 kip. This will give you uh, not 8.3 kip, less than this, it, because this will be the pressure at, uh, this will be the shear reaction at the face of the, at the face of the uh, arm, which is the junction of the toe with the arm. However, at a distance of D from this uh, face of the arm, this will be uh, equal to 8.3 kip. This you can do very easily. Similarly, in the case of heel, the shear force at the distance of D can be calculated because the total will be 3.5 into 5.25. The total shear at maximum shear, maximum shear at this location will be 3.5 into 5.25, and at the distance of D can be calculated from the shear force diagram easily. Okay, now let's do the design of arm for flexure. Uh, we have seen that for h is equal to 13.5 mu is equal to 45.49 feet from the bending moment diagram and the minimum reinforcement uh, according to this equation is 0 0.51 inch square per foot if we are given by this minimum reinforcement we can do so when we calculate small a from this as and then substitute this small a in this equation as minimum is calculated, this will give us a 5 mn equal to 335.2 inch kip per foot. And then we will compare this with the given uh, bending moment. We can see that uh, the 5 mn value, which is a foot kip 27, and the demand is 45.49 at the base of the arm. Uh, so demand is more than this nominal capacity. We will have to uh, do some trials in order to calculate as for corresponding to this bending moment. When we do some trials, you know. You can do this very easily. You assume small a and calculate a is finally you will reach uh, some value of a is which will uh, not increase with further trials. This value can be selected as a is equal to 0 0.846 square inch. Uh, and if we try number eight bar, with number eight bars, 11.17 uh, inch spacing will be required in order to uh, um, prevent the uh, failure of uh, the arm stream against this bending moment. The maximum spacing for menstrual reinforcement according to the ACI code is 3 or 18 inch. So 11.17 is less than this, that is okay. Because uh, the bending moment will change along the uh, height of the retaining wall, for this reason, uh, it is uh, advisable uh, to use uh, different spacing of the vertical reinforcement in order to make uh, the uh, retaining wall economical. Uh, in most of the cases, the reinforcement is changed uh, uh, to change from the mid height of the retaining wall, uh, or in some cases, it is uh, changed uh, three uh, in it is it, it is changed in three. Uh, the reinforcement is provided in three different stages. In the first uh, one third part, from the bottom of the base. Uh, a closer spacing is provided than the middle third of the uh, arm uh, or stem. Uh, the reinforcement with the little more spacing is provided in the top. Uh, more, relatively more spacing will be required. So in this way, we can uh, economize uh, the retaining wall. In this case, however, we may, we have provided only two uh, spacings in the uh, arm or stem. Uh, and this we have, this, uh, we have demonstrated in this slide. Uh, the depth of the retaining wall from top to bottom are 0, 3, 6, 9, 12, 13.5. The thickness of the retaining wall corresponding to every height, the, th the thickness of the arm corresponding to, you know that at the top, at the top, the thickness is 8 inch, at 3 feet, every, at every depth, this thickness of the arm can be calculated. The moment can be then calculated from the equation because the equation has been written in terms of H. So for any value of h, the bending moment can be calculated. As minimum can be calculated from the equation. As minimum values will change because the thickness of the retaining wall changes. 
uh, along the height of the retaining wall, along the height of the arm. And 5M and minimum can also be calculated from this AS minimum, as demonstrated in one of the slides. And then uh, you can see from this yellow that the governing uh, movement will be the nominal, uh, the minimum bending movement, because these are the demand. This table, the column number three, gives demand at various heights. So zero is demand at top, 14.89 at three feet, 73.36 at six feet, and 196.09 at nine feet. And the corresponding nominal, uh, the minimum, minimum uh, reinforcement uh, flexural capacity is uh, given by this minimum reinforcement. So this is 58.81, which is greater than zero, 98.9 and greater than this, 149 greater, 210. Governing movement means that all these nominal, cap the minimum, minimum capacity in all cases is greater than the demand in every case. So for these, uh, from zero to nine feet, minimum reinforcement is enough. Okay, this is what we wanted to uh, clarify in this discussion. And from nine to 13.5 feet, then the bending moment is more than the minimum, uh, the, then the, the, the demand bending moment is more than the bending moment uh, given by the minimum reinforcement. Okay, for that we will design. And we've already designed this for the bottom 13.5 feet bending moment, which is uh, 545.87 bending moment. For this, we've already designed and we have calculated reinforcement 0.846. The spacing uh, came out to be 11 inch. Maximum spacing is 18 inch according to the ACI code. Now, we will keep the spacing uniform from 13.5 to 9 feet from the bottom of the arm up to a depth of uh, almost half of the retaining wall in half of the arm. And in the top portion, we will we will double the spacing in order to economize the arm or stem. So finally, from a depth of 13.5 to 9 feet, we'll provide number eight at the rate of 90 center to center. And the remaining top part, we will double the spacing. The horizontal bars on the back side can be calculated from this equation as uh, demonstrated in one of the slides that it will be equal to 0.0025 bh for deformed bars larger than number five. So 0.0025 fill into 15, this, come out, this comes out to be 0.4 square inch per foot. When we try three by four inch round bar, so three by four inch rate of 11.73 inch center center will be required. We round this to three by four at rate of nine center center. This is the horizontal reinforcement on the back side of the arm. This is the top, this is the front side of the retaining wall. The reinforcement is 0 0.0015, 0 0.27. If we use three by four inch round bar, the spacing comes out to be 19.5 inch, but this shall be not more than 18 inch, so we provide this at the rate of 18 inch. Similarly, we can also uh, check the arm um, for shear. We have seen the, in the shear force diagram that we use 7.6 kip with 5 EC equal to 15.09 kip. This is greater than 7.6, so there's no problem of shear. The reinforcement in the arm will be provided in this manner. Up to the mid height of the retaining wall, number eight at the rate of nine inch, and then the spacing will be doubled with one bar, bar Made continues and other curtailed this location. So this will double the spacing in this manner. The horizontal is number six at nine inch. The front side vertical reinforcement is number six at 18 inch. Now uh, the design of toe. You know that the design of toe, in the design of toe, the upward pressure of the soil is being taken into account. And MU is being calculated in the uh, analysis part, which is 258 inch kip per foot. AS minimum is calculated from this equation, which comes out to be 0 0.592. From this, the bending moment given by this minimum reinforcement is calculated, which is 451. And this is greater than MU. So we will use the minimum reinforcement. And minimum reinforcement is 0 0.592. If you use number eight bar, the spacing required is 16 inch, which is greater than 18 and all this. So this number eight at threat of 16 is spacing is enough. For shear, in the shear force diagram, we use equal to 8.3 kip, 5 AC, 17.5, 1 kip. So, tow is also safe against shear. The, otherwise, you will increase the thickness of the tow. 
In the heel, the bend movement has been calculated 578.8 inch cape. Base minimum is this 5 mn from the minimum reinforcement is 451, which is less than this. So we will calculate area of steel. And for this bending movement, m u, when we calculate area of steel, it comes out to be 0 0.75 square inch from hit and trials. If you use number 8 part, this will be number 8 at the rate of 12.39 inch. So finally, you will use number 8 at the rate of 12 inch to center. Supporting bar will be placed number 4 at the rate of 15 inch. Again, shear 14.14 kip is from the shear force diagram, 5 AC, 17.51 kip is more than this. The development length checks are also made at the end. You know, you can see this. That uh, development when the hook must be this. So this is calculated 17.8 inch. This is greater than. We can uh, increase depth of or change the steel grade if we use grade 40 steel. So this will be. So it, this uh, uh, this concludes the design of the retaining wall. You can see different parts of the retaining wall. This is arm and this is heel and toe. In the arm, on the back side, the main reinforcement number eight at the rate of nine and number eight at the rate of 15 will provide. Horizontal bars, both in the front and back side, I will provide it at the number six at the rate of nine inch. Okay, and uh, the front side, vertical reinforcement number six at 18 inch. The front, the top side of the heel, the top side of the heel is a reinforcement equal to number eight at the rate of 12 inch. The bottom side of the toe, number eight at the rate of 16 inch. All other reinforcement has been provided at the rate of number number four at the rate of 18 inch center. This is the end of uh, this uh, presentation. Uh, there are a few pictures at the end which we can share with you on the actual uh, retaining wall that we have designed and constructed in our projects. This is a typical key provided in one of the retaining walls. You can see a key in the retaining walls. The retaining wall key in the, this is the heel side and this is the toe side, this is very clear. Next, I will also share with you one of our projects where we have uh, done an assessment of uh, retaining wall in Tenzagal in the Chief Minister House. We then retrofitted this retaining wall, which was basically uh, very weak against lighting. And also, as you can see, this is the Chief Minister House in Natyagali. You can see the sliding of the retaining wall, slight tipping of the retaining wall on this side, which is cracked. The building as well. This, this uh, separation of the retaining wall. which is cross cracks in the pictures and buildings. So we did the analysis of this retail and then we uh, suggested a fitting strategy for this retaining wall. You can see the quality of, you can see this uh, weep hole, which is already choked by vegetation. This needs regular maintenance. So this retaining wall was uh, uh, checked against all possible failure modes and it was found that the retaining uh, wall was uh, uh, not educated against sliding as well as uh, the structural components, especially the arm of the retaining wall was not educated uh, against flagger. So we strengthened this. Uh, proposed retrofitting scheme for CNW department. This was a very good project. So, with this, uh, our course in the reinforced concrete design ends. If you have any questions, you can ask your questions, otherwise, the lecture is over. Thank you very much. Any question from anyone, please? Any question? Please. What is your name? 